What is up guys? Today we're at the beach and I think it is a great day to talk about the effects of UV radiation on the skin. So ultraviolet radiation is a spectrum of radiation that has been most implicated in the formation of skin cancer. There are three main spectrums of ultraviolet radiation, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is actually mostly absorbed by the ozone layer, so that doesn't really affect us much. And UVB is the spectrum of radiation that is most implicated in the formation of skin cancer. What happens when sunlight strikes our skin? What happens is the ultraviolet radiation induces the formation of pyridine dimers in our DNA. If you picture DNA as almost like a ladder, a pyridine dimer within the DNA is like two rungs of a ladder that have become bound together. What this does is it actually induces a kink within the DNA strand and makes it kind of unusable. Luckily, our body has DNA repair mechanisms that it can use to repair these kinks in our DNA. But when these repair mechanisms become overwhelmed, it can actually lead to mutations within our DNA. So the reason why we actually get tan in response to sunlight is because the UV radiation has induced damage within our skin. You see, tanning, or the increased uh, formation of melanin within the skin, is actually a response to DNA damage that was induced by sunlight. Melanin can be good because what it does is it absorbs the UV radiation and protects our DNA from damage. The amount of melanin that we have naturally in our skin will vary from person to person. Sunscreens like this one here are what are called chemical blockers, and what they do is they absorb harmful UV radiation before it causes damage to the skin. SPF is also known as sun protective factor. And this one is actually SPF 50. SPF reflects the amount of UV radiation it would take in order to induce a burn. A higher SPF needs more protection. Only sunscreens with an SPF greater than 15 can actually claim to be able to reduce skin cancer. Of course, it's better to look for SPFs that are even higher, typically above 30. Interestingly, most people don't apply enough sunscreen. In fact, most people only apply 25 to 50% of what's actually needed. If you're applying a rub-on sunscreen, you should be applying about enough to fill a shot glass. No sunscreen in the world can actually make the claim of waterproof. As a matter of fact, they'll all say what this one says, which is water resistant. In order for a sunscreen to claim water resistant, it must be effective for 40 to 80 minutes while swimming or sweating. So if you're going on the beach, make sure to wear plenty of sunscreen and prevent skin cancer.